four ounces of power, one cup of utility, three tablespoons of fun, add gas or diesel to taste and mix together in a bowl made by Mazda. Bone apple tea. This is everything you need to know to get up to speed on the Ford Ranger. Before the Ranger was the Ranger, it was a high-end trim level for Ford's F-Series trucks and the Bronco, starting in 1965. It was a popular upgrade package, but it would be almost 20 years before the Ranger became its own entity. All it took were a few major national crises and almost going under for Ford to realize they needed to do something different. Let me set the scene for you. It's the 1970s. Everybody's got Saturday Night Live fever. My dad was setting up family franchises all across the US and the gas crisis was about to rock people's worlds and the only companies that saw it coming were the Japanese truck manufacturers trucks like the Datsun 521 and the original Toyota Hilux started gaining popularity so when the gas crisis hit in the early 70s and fuel availability became more of a concern Japanese truck manufacturers already had a steady base while American manufacturers were caught off guard Their their truck line was all big, bad, full-size honkers like the surfboards back then. Have you ever seen Endless Summer? Ford was frantically searching for a way to dip their little toes in the light truck market. And they weren't the only ones. Chevy and Dodge were in the same boat. Like some weird formal sock hop, Chevy partnered with Isuzu, Dodge partnered with Mitsubishi, and Ford partnered with Mazda. Then they danced awkwardly to O-Town. Cause I want it all. Ford made Mazda do all the work designing a light truck. Then they slapped their name on it. Enter the Ford Courier. This little zaddy was a rebadged Mazda B1800. It was imported as a cab chassis configuration without the truck bed attached to circumvent the chicken tax. Ah! You know that annoying tax on light trucks that keeps us from having cool things? Uh, why is it called the chicken tax? Well, American chickens were selling so well in Europe that European chicken farmers got pissed. So some European countries started taxing American chickens. To combat that economic impact of that tax, America was like, oh yeah, we'll show you. We'll tax your lot trucks that you guys love importing. It's super weird but it's true. The 1972 Ford Courier had a 1.8 liter four banger that spit out 74 Shetland ponies and 92 pound feet of torque. It had a four speed manual transmission and an impressive load capacity of 1400 pounds or 14 14 year olds. The Mazda import was given a facelift to look more like a Ford, a new grill that was an homage to the larger F series and large single headlights that did away with the small double ones on the Japanese truck. The Courier wasn't meant to last forever though. In 1973, OPEC placed an embargo on any country that supported Israel. Luckily, Ford had something cooking in the kitchen. That year, they kicked off Project Yuma. You see, the Courier was just a stopgap while Ford was developing their own secret compact truck. Over the next few years, light trucks continued to gain steam as full-size truck sales became stagnant. Then. In 1979, just when it looked like things might be getting better, Iran had a revolution and really shook things up. Ford had just launched the new full-sized F-Series line and the massive LTV sedan, which would later become the Crown Vic. They were barely breaking even on sales and were almost forced to scrap Project Yuma to cut losses. But then, CEO Don Peterson stepped in and he was all, no, we're keeping it for two reasons. All right, GM is about to come out with their own compact trucks. Plus, I think we can sell the Yuma for the same price as the F100, even though it costs us a lot less to produce. Okay, sounds good. Can we go to lunch now? It was like the late 70s, so they probably had steaks and big loaded baked potatoes and pint glasses full of whiskey with no ice. And it was probably after a couple of those big old whiskeys that they decided to rename the compact truck from Yuma to Ranger after the top tier F-Series trim of the same name. So much research went into the Ranger. Like, so much, you guys. They scrapped old plans and added exotic, lightweight magnesium for the clutch housing, brake, and clutch support brackets. That alone cut 20% off the truck's weight. They also spent a lot of time improving aerodynamics, like a front bumper spoiler that added one MPG by itself. Good job, bumper spoiler! The final truck design had a drag coefficient of 
four or five, which Bart tells me was pretty good for back then. 1981 marked the last year that both the F-Series and Bronco carried the Ranger trim level. Ford halted it in anticipation for the new truck's release. And in 1982, eight plus five, what's eight plus five? 13. And in 1982, 13 years before Post Malone was born, production started on the all new Ford Ranger in nowhere else but Louisville, Kentucky! By the two! Exactly where my parents started production on me when my dad put his evil inside of my mom. It had taken 10 years, but finally in 1983, the Ford Ranger made its debut. All in all, they spent $700 million in early 80s money developing the Ranger, with most of the cost coming from designing a fuel efficient engine that complied with cafe regulations. The 1983 Ford Ranger offered three different engines. A two liter inline four originally from the Pinto, a 2.8 liter clone V6, and a Mazda built 2.2 liter four cylinder diesel. The power ranged from 59 horsepower in the diesel to a monstrous frame bending 115 hers purrs in the V6. Truck beds came in either six foot or seven foot versions and had a load capacity of 1600 pounds. The Ranger was noticeably thinner than her older F-Series brothers, but that didn't stop engineers from designing the bed to be big enough to carry a four foot wide sheet of drywall, which Bart tells me is considered an industry standard. Initially, right off the bat, sales of the Ranger were hurt by the competition from Chevy and Gimsk. But Don Peterson and Ford needed the Ranger to work Failure to sell the small trucks meant something bigger than just shutting down production of the Ranger. It meant total catastrophe. Luckily, Ford stuck it out. And by 1985, they were selling 230,000 Rangers a year. The first generation of Rangers lasted almost 10 years in production. That's almost as long as I was in high school. During this time, many trim levels were introduced, including the Ranger XL, the Ranger XLT, which was like the XL, but with a T, and the Ranger GT. The GT came with a redesigned clone V6 engine that put out 100 and 40 grass-fed buff horses. None of that corn-fed BS for my horses, only oats, grass, and sugar cubes when they're good. Introducing the first sports car that comes with a fed, the new Ranger GT. Another option for the Ranger dubbed the Super Cab included an extra 17 inches of cab space. The Ranger High Rider STX came out in 1987. This 4x4 was so much sicker than any Ranger that came out before it. It had bed mounted light bars and a tubular grill guard. The High Rider also had an extra one and a half more inches of ground clearance. Coincidentally, this is the year that the Ranger became the best selling compact pickup truck in America. Uh, uh, uh. Can you believe we almost scrapped this project? <laughs> Dude, I don't even wanna think about it. Let's just celebrate. A 1989 redesign in honor of Taylor Swift's birth added a Mazda made transmission, new front fenders and dashboard, and an instrument panel with improved legibility. The Ranger's new flush mounted grill was added to mimic the grill of the F series. The updated Super Cab got center facing jump seats, increasing passenger capacity to five DILFs. The second gen Ranger was introduced in 1992. Flush mounted door glass, wider doors and fender flares gave an updated appearance. Old engines like the stinky 2.9 liter Cologne V6 and the three liter Vulcan were retired and in their place, bigger engine and more power baby. More power baby, more power baby, more power baby. Then in 1993, Ford came out with the most 90s truck ever made. The 1994 Ford Ranger Splash and Splash Super Cab. It came with spicy aluminum wheels and totally twisted decals that let everyone else on the beach know the only things I haul are boogie boards, Zima, and big busted babies. Very small cosmetic changes happened over the next few years, including, you guessed it, a new grill, a new hood, safety upgrades, and even 
a six disc CD changer. Ooh. And the Ranger remained a solid choice throughout the 90s. In 1998, the third gen Ranger made its debut. This new Ranger had evolved to have a wider wheelbase, a bigger cab, and longer bed. Engineers replaced the twin I-beam front suspension that had been standard since the beginning with wishbone suspension and added rack and pinion steering. Yeehaw! The base model four cylinder was upgraded, bumping the power up 6%. The V6 got an upgraded intake manifold and increased torque by 14%. Cosmetic upgrades included, <laughs> yup, a new grill, bam, bam, bam. an aluminum hood, bigger rear glass, which increased visibility, plus pulse vacuum hub locks. So you could go off-roading without waking up your dad. But maybe the most innovative thing to come from the third generation Ranger was the introduction of the Ranger EV. Bet you didn't know Ford made an electric truck in the 90s. No, I didn't know that. I didn't know that at all. It was powered by a rear mounted 90 horsepower electric motor that had a top speed of 75 miles per and a range of 35 to 50 miles for a vehicle named the Ranger. You'd think it would have more range. <laughs> it only lasted for four years until 2002 when Ford pulled the plug. <laughs> Oh, ooh. Light trucks started dying out in the early 2000s. In their places, bigger boys like the GMC Canyon, Toyota Tundra, and Nissan Frontier started selling more and more. Sales of the Ranger decreased in America. Then the recession of 2008 hit. Compact truck sales shriveled like a baby turtle, and it looked as if the Ranger's days were numbered. Ford had a new Ranger set to launch in 2011, but they took it out in the backyard and shot it in the face. The Ranger went from being the best-selling compact truck 13 years in a row to dying a quiet death in 2011. But with any good story, there's always a twist. Ask M. Night Shyamalan, he's the best filmmaker ever. Like I mentioned before, Mazda have been selling a rebadged Ranger as the B-Series in the US from 1994 to 2009. Mazda was also selling the B-Series in places like Australia, Asia, Europe, South Africa, and New Zealand. And they continued to do so even after the Ranger was discontinued in America. Ford thought it was too close to the F-150 to sell in the US but overseas, it was a smash hit, an unknown variable. <laughs> the legacy of the Ranger was not lost. Seven million Rangers have been sold since 1983, making it one of the best-selling trucks and vehicles of all time. 2019 marks the first year that Ford will debut a new Ranger in the US since they discontinued them in 2011. The new 2019 Ford Ranger won't have a V6 option. The only engine available for US Rangers as of now is the 2.3 liter inline four EcoBoost. <laughs> which puts out an impressive 270 turbocharged horsepowers. New Ranger has the best in class torque of 310 Turks and comes standard with a 10 speed auto, but no manual option. It's only available in three trim levels, the XL, the XLT, and the 4x4 Lariat. There's been some talk about a Ranger Raptor coming to the US. <laughs> Please. Quick announcement, starting next week, we're gonna start uploading up to speed a little bit later. It's gonna go up at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, which means it's noon for you fools on the East Coast. So don't freak out when it's not up at seven because it'll be up at nine. Bye. Thanks for watching up to speed. Smash that like button. Smash it, smash it. We get 25,000 likes in a day. Uh, I'll take suggestions for something stupid to do. <laughs> you like this shirt? Go to donutmedia.com to get you one. Follow me on Instagram, at James Pumphrey. Follow Donut on Instagram, at Donut Media. Watch this, watch this. Mm -hmm.